Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2024 calendar project with Fire and Safety Services, the local Pierce dealer in New Jersey. Today, we're here in Howell Township, the Ramtown Fire Company, 19-4. Chief, thank you for having me. I have Assistant Chief Sal Scarlato is joining me today. We're gonna talk about your 2022 Pierce International 4x4 urban wildland interface engine that you guys put in service. So, Chief, thank you for having me. A little rundown real quick. This is something a little bit different and new for you guys. Definitely. Why? So, this replaced uh, an F550 uh, rescue truck, which had no water. So, it was a pretty big step up from what we had. Um, it was made for brush fires, ice and water rescue, high water and snow events. So it's really different from what we had. We've never had a truck like this before, or even really in our area. And that's really interesting because I know, being a New Jersey guy myself, that you're seeing Central and South Jersey, we're starting to see more of that wildland interface. We're starting to have a lot of those brush fires that are starting to impinge upon the urban sprawl that's happening. And so I'm sure you guys have seen development. I'm sure mm -hmm. you're seeing a larger setback. You and I were talking about that before. So I can really see how this can become super important for you guys. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, farm areas, a lot of long driveways that go back to some big houses. So having something like this is really helpful. And like you said, the brush fires are starting to get closer and closer to here. And they're starting earlier in the year. So the seasons for brush fires are getting even longer now. So it was really good to have this truck now. It absolutely makes sense. 750 gallons, you have a 1,250 gallon pump. You also have a 300 GPM pump and roll, a PTO pump on board that you guys yep. can use during wildland and forest fire. Yes, yeah, so the pump and roll, uh, that's another new thing for us. So we have two hose reels on the side and the front bumper mounted tire on the front. So not only can you use this for wildland and brush fires, but it could also be used for structural firefighting. Yep, the 1250 pump and 750 gallon tank uh, is definitely helpful for that. It's, uh, it can run first due as a regular engine if we need to. Awesome, Chief. Thank you for joining me. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to walk around the apparatus. And we're going to show you all the highlights and thoughts that went into the considerations while building this beautiful piece behind us. So stay tuned. A lot more to come. Okay, so here we are at the front bumper, engine 474, Ramtown Fire Company here in Howell Township, New Jersey. A lot right off the bat. This is a newer type build for them. This is an urban wildland interface engine. And so for them, they saw the need because of the sprawl out into the wildlands here. And so this can act as a structural engine. It could also act as a brush forest or wildland fire protection apparatus as well. And so a couple things of importance to them. First and foremost, it's a four-door international chassis. Let's talk a couple things at the front. First and foremost, a 22-inch painted steel front bumper. We're talking about a fixed-mounted 15,000-pound winch. We have the TFT Tornado RC bumper turret. It's piped with two and a half inch piping to maximize their flow. And on top of that, they have compartmentation up front as well for slings, rope, and rigging to complement the front-mounted winch. It has high clearance. They're using it for water and snow emergencies. They're also using it, obviously, with the four-wheel capabilities, not just for the weather, but also for their four-wheel drive capabilities into the wildlands. And so there's a lot packed into this small package. We have a lot more to bring you. So as we finish up in the front, we're going to work our way around the driver's side. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. So here we are with engine 474, working our way down the driver's side of the engine. A couple things to talk about. I wanna highlight the clearance. With a four-wheel drive chassis like this, we have the ability then to go over obstacles. The chief talked about it earlier, about snow and water responses, but we're also talking off-road and four-wheel drive capabilities on the dirt and rough roads. And so to be able to get into the cab, we need to be able to climb up. What they elected to do was use folding steps. These fold away steps will push up underneath when you hit an obstruction. It's a smart play. When we start talking about suppression, we have a Waterus 1250 single stage pump. Couple things, not only do we have the fixed mounted pump, we also have the 300 gallon per minute PTO driven pump, which allows for them to have pump and roll capabilities. That is piped out through the two booster lines. We have a booster line on each side, 150 feet of one inch hard rubber booster hose 
with an automatic nozzle. And the PTO driven pump, the pump and roll also works on the front bumper turret as well. It's a smart play, especially for their brush and wildland fires that to be able to stay in the truck and operate and move while flowing water. As we work our way back, I want to talk about their cross lays. Two inch and three quarter at 200 feet each, and then they have a two and a half at 150 feet. Now on top of that, in the dunnage area, they have space for extra equipment. They also have their top side monitor that's on an extended gun, so as it pops up, they can have 360 degree sweep around the truck. It's a beautiful build, and I'd love to work our way back to the compartmentation. in a little. That's the theme here with engine 474. And so when we start looking at compartmentation, the department had to be smart about what they chose to put where. And they designed around that. It's doing snow responses, it's doing their water responses, and it's doing structural and brush or wildland firefighting. So there is a lot that has to be put into a small footprint. And so we talk about mounting equipment where it belongs and where it fits correctly. On this side, we have a lot of water rescue equipment. We have our ice sled, some other miscellaneous hand tools, our portable winch that has receivers on each side. We have our blower for wildland, but the other unique thing too is, as we always put SCBA bottles or maybe the driver's SCBA in here, this one here, because of the high side, they elected to make this their engineer compartment. You only need a few fittings. It's a 1250 GPM pump. We don't need all the fittings in the world on this truck. And so the fittings they do have, we're able to fit in here with an upfit from Fire and Safety Services by putting in an extra shelf, which allowed for all their different adapters and so on to be mounted within. It's a nice little play. It's leveled to the ground so the operator can get to it easily and doesn't have to reach out of his own reach. Back here, we have a step in the rear. If we need to, we can deploy the step and we can get up into the compartment to grab our cold water rescue or our swift water rescue gear. So really well thought out, a lot of equipment and a small footprint. We're gonna work our way around the back and talk about the capabilities in the rear. The hose bed. It's pushed up because one, the primary function on this is not a supply line or a supply engine for structural firefighting. This is going third due. And so what they have is 750 gallons of water on board, which is gonna push the hose bed up. But the hose bed does offer 800 feet of five inch supply line. We also have a split, so the cover split. We throw that up, we have a 20 foot extension and a 10 foot roof up top, along with some hooks, poles, and an attic ladder as well. As we work our way down, we have two discharges, both piped at two and a half inch. We have our ladder access here. This undoes, folds out, you can climb up top, as well as inside, compartmentation, special shelving, and so on. Electrical lines and adapters, they have an onboard generator that is removable, and they have a box fan in the rear along with a hydrant bag. Below the back step, we have our hitch receiver. That's for the portable winch that's stored in the rear. And lastly, I wanna talk about for their brush fire or wildland interface firefighting. This is for their attack lines. And so as they stretch, they get the fire out. Instead of re-racking, they'll come to the rear, they'll throw their lines over the pipes, they'll rack them back here and they can move on to the next spot fire, deploy, take care of it, re-rack and go. It just saves time. It's very common on these type of apparatus, especially ones that are deep in the woods or doing structural firefighting within neighborhoods protecting against the wood line. A lot of interesting features on this. We're gonna work our way around to the officer side. officer side rear. A couple things to talk about with compartmentation. Saw compartment, forcible entry, two different roof saws, or I'm sorry, chainsaws. We have forestry lines, some more inch and three quarters, some Indian tanks, and then we have tarps, salvage equipment. 
Over here, we have loose equipment, extinguishers. We have SCBA bottle storage. We have the driver's pack on this side since the other side was used as their engineer's compartment with fittings and adapters. And then here they have their loose tool equipment as well for brush fire, forest fire, wildland firefighting. The hitch receiver's down below, just like the other sides, as well as a fold out step to get to the upper compartments. So let's work our way up towards the chassis. cab it's an international four by four as we discussed the pierce build out a lot of different things inside the cab to talk about one it's seating for five they have four scba seats inside the interior above they have storage they have radio storage they have light boxes so anything you would find in your structural fire engine is going to be here in the cab as we move up front we have controls we have that front bumper turret and we have the ability to pump and roll with that 300 gpm pto pump and roll capacity. And so with that, we have our pressure controller here, and then we have a remote to direct and use the nozzle. The way they do it here is the operator operates and the officer will control the flow of the front bumper turret. So pretty interesting setup. Cup holders, gotta have them. And then everything else is clearly labeled along with USB ports, backup camera, along with the 360 camera also that they have view on all four sides, which helps out when operating in remote areas. Really well thought out. A lot of real estate, when you think of commercial chassis, you don't think about how much space you have. You almost think you're gonna be limited, but in fact, there's plenty of space here. A lot more to come. Let me hop out. I'm gonna get back with the assistant chief and we're gonna do a wrap up. Chief, what a great build. Thank you for having us today. Final thoughts, what you're looking forward to in the future with this piece, what it's gonna be able to do for you guys. Well, we're looking to uh, expand what we can do. We're trying to go you know, wherever we can, to all over the state, if we can, to go uh, to different forest fires. We're already a couple, on a couple of different county task forces with it now, so just trying to go to more fires. Who doesn't like doing that, right? Exactly. That's part of the beast, right? It's what we do. So I wanna say thank you for being a part of this. Working with Fire and Safety as your distributor of this apparatus, talk to me a little bit about the relationship you have with them. We've had a lot of Pierce's over the years. Um, we've almost almost all Pierce fleet as far as our engines. As far as working with Pierce, this was super easy. Uh, communication back and forth, uh, small changes and tweaks, so. Yeah, I mean, I noticed as we walked around a bunch of the upfitting that was done by them in-house, which I'm sure was done at, at your discretion. Yep. And ultimately, the overall process for PM, maintenance on the apparatus and things like that, I'm sure it's an open line of communication as well. Yeah, same thing, just call them, they show up, they're usually really quick. Most of the repairs get done in-house, so it has to go out, it goes out, and it's back pretty quickly. Well, that seems to be the common theme when we're talking about fire and safety services and their commitment to their customers. And so here we are with the June featured 2024 apparatus. Chief, thank you for having us. We appreciate your time and, and opening your doors to us. Thanks for coming. You got it. Guys, check out Fire and Safety Services at www.f-ss.com. Check out their social media. The full length will be on YouTube. And then, of course, check out social media with National Fire Radio as well as Fire and Safety Services. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at the next one. Jeremy, National Fire Radio.